Hey, welcome back. We are still working on this small church. I laid out my remote area. I decided the uh, best uh, sprinklers to calc for this are going to be the uprights uh, above the ceiling. And I'm going to use a full 1,500 square feet for the remote area. And I'm just going to... What I like to do is I like to run uh, auto calc just to uh, the top of the riser and then I manually input the underground. That tends to work a little bit better for me. Um, one thing I was going to do real quick is I need to um, place riser nipples on the sprinklers that are going to the center of the ceiling tiles. And I'm going to also add caps to the ends of the branch lines. I'm going to do that real quick. QC for quick cap. Select your pipe. And now it's six inches. Looks like it sized it at one inch, so we'll resize it to inch and a quarter. And you can usually do these if there's a branch line that's close to it and you don't want to go through the whole quick cap thing again. I'll just copy it over. That one worked out pretty good there. Looks like that one got marked as one inch, so it's always good to be careful and make sure you're catching those mistakes. You don't ever want to stock list that kind of fitting there. cap off the main as well. Use the same command. Give that six inches out. All right. I'm going to pause this for a minute because I can hear the trash truck coming down the street and uh, I know it's going to get pretty loud. So I'm going to keep working on this and I'll be right back. Okay, I think the trash truck is gone. Um, I don't think it's made its round to my street yet, but I think it's on the far side of the block. So I'm going to keep going on this for a little bit. I'm using the uh, RS command for your riser setup to insert all these uh, riser nipples for the pendant sprinklers going into the ceiling tile. And I'm using a specified length of six inches, uh, just calling it a riser nipple, set my diameter to one inch, and I'm hiding my text on this one, um, just because I don't think you need to see your uh, six inch riser nipple everywhere, so uh, the, the text for that. So I'm just going through here and I use uh, the right click a lot on the mouse, but in this case, um, using your space bar and just kind of hitting it twice will get you um, through the command rather quickly. And you can always just set it once and then copy it around and rotate them around, but I found that when you actually take the time to um, insert each one, again, um, we're always just trying to avoid any uh, unnecessary crashes with um, HydroCAD. So this tends to uh, keep it from doing that as often. So 
I'm just going to go through here. Now I've been having to be pretty careful with um, with HydraCAD lately when inserting these riser nipples. Um, if you're too far away, it will um, give you a fatal error and uh, close out of not just your current file, but any other file that might be open as well in AutoCAD. So after I insert a few, I always just kind of hit a control S to save the drawing and not lose any, uh, any unnecessary work. So let's see. I think we got all those put in. Let's go back and get these last ones. See, uh, this arm over it might not work because we got to hang it. We can't be directly under that ductwork. So I'm going to go ahead and move it out. And we'll just draw our arm over in and resize. And then RS to get right back into the riser nipple command. And that's how we're going to go through here. Again, I've done it before without any problems, just copying your riser nipple over. But Again, this just ensures a more solid drawing instead of uh, the program trying to understand a changed attribute on a on a block or association with it. It just understands it as a uh, as an in inputted uh, command, like hasn't been messed with. So. We're just trying to go for a clean, um, clean running drawing. And this has been a lot of trial and error on my part. Um, more recently, I've been working more with XREFs. Usually I've uh, brought in all the files that I need into a single drawing um, just so that um, when working on server environments, um, it can be difficult for other designers to open your files if the um, if the xrefs aren't um, associated properly like with a path back to the drawing and um, even if you set the the relative path to follow and and you do everything right i found that a lot of times there's still uh problems opening the uh the drawings without having to go back and find the source folder for the xrefs so but it uh using xrefs has uh really reduced the size of the drawing and um just the overall uh w workability of of the model itself the fact that we can just turn them off whenever we need to And, you know, the program itself just doesn't even worry about it at that point. And then we can reload them as we need them. Um, so. I've been enjoying working it uh, through it this way, but going back to the riser nipples, inserting each one has just uh, that's just been like a, a better way to 
to do it, I found. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, rerun the model and uh, copy it over so I have a working model with uh, the riser nipples shown. Again, we'll select it, isolate it, copy it. About 500 feet down. Unisolate. Select it all, put it in a different layer. I usually go with text. And make sure the color is by layer. And, or not. You can do, do it however you want there. And there we go. I'm going to save this and take a quick look at it. Looks pretty good. And I'll see if I can. Okay, so. Here, let me see if I can show you what I mean about having to, why we need to do the swing joint here real quick. Um, where's my ski pole? Let's put that in here. I'll see if it works. All right, perfect. So the reason we put it on a, on a 90 like this is as the uh, roof pitches, we have to be able to match it. So that's why you put it on a swing. The sprinkler is here in plan view, but uh, we'll still have to match the pitch a little bit. So this uh, arm over here would probably have to get cut back, but that's... Uh, the purpose of a swing joint right there so that you can do this and match your roof pitch so good example there good way to show you okay so I know all this is gonna stock list awesome and I know it's gonna it should calc very well which is the next step now And again, I'm just going to calc it to here and manually input the underground myself. And we already have uh, the hydrant flow test report with a very good number. Hundred ninety or hundred static ninety residual pressure. And we got the civil plans as well. There's a double check out here that uh, RPZ backflow out here that we'll have to include in the calcs. Uh, six inch detector reduced pressure zone, refer to MEP plan. Um, this is already installed on site, so I know it's uh, right here and we'll include that in the calc, but our hydrant for the flow test is not this one, it's one that's a little bit further down. All right, here comes the trash truck, so I'm gonna pause this for a minute and come back. All right, the trash is gone. So, good flow test. We know there's a backflow out here. I already laid out my remote area going with 1500 square feet above uh, for the uh, upright sprinkler protection above the ceiling and um, let me close this open up my properties 
can see right here it's uh, 1508 square feet so right where we need to be and uh, just a reminder that when you're laying out your remote area you always want to be parallel to your longest branch line or most remote branch line and always start um, removing heads from your remote area to get to your 1500 um, from the furthest sprinkler away so you want these you want your um, remote area to look like this and it's easy to think that this sprinkler would be more demanding but in reality the closer you get to your main you have a higher pressure requirement so you end up having to prove these to uh, in order to get your this one out here to work you end up with a more demanding calc this way so all right so we got our remote area laid out and now just going right down the uh, list for um, for uh, hydro listing this thing so we got our remote area laid out uh, we're gonna name it remote area one we're gonna convert that line that we made and there it is next step we're gonna turn on the sprinklers remote area one now since there's two kinds of uh, sprinklers in the remote area it's gonna tell you that there's more than one head found on there and ask you which one or if you uh, want to turn them all on um, I'm going to say no in this case and select the ones that I do want to turn on, which are 14 of the sprinklers above the ceiling. I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, flow test information inserted in there. With a static pressure of 100, residual pressure of 90. And the flow on this was 100. We have the pitot pressure. didn't provide a graph so I'm going to over open up hydrocalc real quick to get to figure that out for me um, so if we go to our water sources here static of 100 residual of 90 Pitot pressure of 83, diameter of 2.5, coefficient of 0.9, calcar residual flow, we're flowing 1529. Very, very good flow test. And again, this isn't the exact reference point where we're going to be calcing it to. I'm just using this to generate the uh, data input automatically in HydroCalc, and then I just finish the rest of it. So we've got our test inputted. Uh, now let's go into our sprinklers here. I'm going to go S1, and I'm going to select the Enable Drop and Sprig options. So, sprinkler on sprig, sprig. And just right on down the list. Now I'm going to list the uh, T's on the on each line where 
and the thing it gets hard to uh, see it sometimes but we want the um, connection point for T1 right there so we're gonna go T1 we don't need the sprinkler definition there and we don't need to find sprinklers we're just gonna uh, pipe endpoints and vertical pipes so T1 is there T2 T3 T4 so forth and as I'm coming through here I saw something that I could change real quick that might be an easier way to do it Just going to cut in this pendant here into that line there. even do it on this one too. I mean either way would work but um, it just seems like it would be easier to do it this way. size that okay so we were at t10 we're on t11 12 13 and 14 going to put a node at the bottom here and now I'm ready to label my main piping and I'm going to tag all of the um, connection points where the branch lines meet up and anywhere else that I might see an opportunity to change pipe size. So I'm going to add me a couple of extra nodes and that's going to be it to the test. Quick and easy. Um, I am going to update the model since we updated those arm overs. Save it first. Go to 3D. All right. Isolate. Copy it over. Unisolate. Always very important to unisolate before you go back to 2D, otherwise you're going to get doubled up on your um, on your dimensions, on your pipes. For some reason it just glitches out. Okay, so we got that updated. We have our nodes input.
So let's add the area to our, um, we're not going to worry with about the hose, but let's add the area of our sprinklers. Make sure I get the right one there. roughly about the same and you can double check with each one so see it's 104 to these sprinklers down here so I'm gonna go with a more demanding of the two at the 110 I'm just going to double check the uh, twice the distance from the wall. Still about the same. So we'll go with 110. And just go right on through each one. And those will also get um, auto generated in the calc as well. So save this. Looks like we got some missing pipe sizes there. So um, let's get these fixed here. And I know they're going to be messed up in the model, but one quick way to fix them is using properties. You select them, and under diameter, move it to inch and a quarter. So I should have seen that. I should have looked for it. I just assumed I did everything uh, correctly, but it happens. And you just fix it and move on. Okay, so all the nodes are in there. That's fixed. Going right on down the list. I don't think we're going to need to add any fittings, so I think we're ready to give it a check up here. Select the boundary box. Okay. All right, no errors. So let's go ahead and run the calc. Calc area one. And I don't ever really worry about this area too much. I just end up updating that um, manually as well. The density you can you can work on, you can update um, head area. It doesn't matter since we assigned that in the drawing. Um, And we'll let it do its thing. Okay. And there it is. So I can already tell that it picked up on a lot of these. I'm going to have to correct all of these manually uh, inputted or all of these automatic 
numbers here, four and five. It looks like it picked up the uh, the different elevation point for the sprig before it attaches to the main, and it gave it an automatic number of seven of of individual numbers. So it looks like there's one for every sprinkler. So I need to fix thirteen of these or fourteen of them. Um, But I'll go back and I'll fix that afterwards. For now, I'm just going to hit calc it just so I can get my nodes in there. And I mean, this thing is just, that flow test is very, very good. Um, so, but again, we're also applying this flow test right at the uh, top of riser without including any of the riser or underground info yet. But this is usually a good sign. Um, because it's not much further to our connection point. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Save it and then just close it and then finish area one. So I know that there's going to be extra nodes that I didn't input there, which is why I like to set up uh, and take the time and, and input the nodes that manually input the uh, the nodes for each sprinkler because technically you could just run the calc and it would auto generate nodes for you um, but this way there's more control in the calc uh, when um, with how I want it to read and how I want it to um, look on the drawing as well so we're going to open it up Close our properties. We're going to set these up here. So I know all these ones, these single digit numbers without a letter, are going to go away. And I'll show you how I'm going to fix that. So S1 goes to T1. So we have to add the distance from here to here. So that's actually two elbows and one T, and then that's 5.49. So. connection point is actually the T1 and then we're just going to remove one and now that should read from T1 to T2 and so forth I don't see any other additional nodes except for the ones that uh, were getting caught on the um, on the ele different elevation point on those sprigs so I'm going to do that for the rest of these add them up so it says T2 we're going to get rid of two, but before we do, we got to make sure. Looks like it's the same for that one, so. Close that. It's going to be the same for this one. That goes to T3. Erase that one. Looks like this one's the same. Erase. T4, again, the same, T5, erase, S6 to T6, that's going to be a little bit different, looks like we got 3.79 plus 4.04, 7.83, and then we're going to bring these fittings and add them up to here as well, so we got two E's, one T, this goes to T6, fixes that. These we have to add them up. 3.79 plus 7.04, 10.83. 
and so forth. And the more you work with this program, the quicker it gets. I kind of started out manually inputting the data into the calc uh, program and not really messing with auto calc, but doing it this way, um, using a sort of combination of both tends to uh, be the best approach that we have full control of, um, of the program. So 2.81, Where is that one? I'm going to double check that one. So we got S11 to T11, and we hit one, two E's, and then one T. Okay. S12 to T12. And that's just going to simplify the calc as well, like when you go to read it. Looks like that one is the same. And erase. So save this, run it again. Uh, disconnected pipe, S7 to 7. So there we go. This needs to be T7. There we go. So same numbers we had before, but now we just simplified it. We uh, got rid of a couple of nodes that we didn't need. And so now we have the calc back to the riser um, and I believe we're gonna also go with uh, schedule 10 on this and man this riser is gonna be very small so I'm just gonna for now I'm just gonna start looking to see what a two and a half inch looks like and we'll make all the grooved pipe schedule 10 or what's going to be grooved. All the one inch stuff, all the arm overs will be schedule 40, but even at two and a half inch, we should have a very good safety margin on all this. Um, so now let's go and input our riser information and we can um, start messing with that. So if we're at nine foot eight, and we're gonna input that path here. So uh, if we're at nine foot eight here for the top of our riser, we're gonna drop down and then out so the streets about out here somewhere and I have actually have the uh, site plan on CAD So to spot that riser room, that entry into there, let's see what I can do. Because I know the backflow is somewhere 
over here. And if we go back to our plans, I wonder if there's a scale on here. Yes, there is. Okay, so using Bluebeam, uh, which I just recently started using, we can get some measurements. I'm going to calibrate this. Here, there, there. That is... So that when we go to place it an engine, it's going to be correct. Yeah, it's a pretty nifty tool. So from here to where the riser is, it's about thirteen six maybe. Just about. So we're going to add that length plus the. Um, here, let's see if I can draw it on here. So if we look at that from the side view, we're going to come down from our system. We're going to have our butterfly valve. Our riser valve there, down to our above ground backflow, there's the gate valve, and then the city water to the test. I know it looks kind of terrible, but this is just a quick representation here. So there's our backflow. It'll be top of riser and at the flange will be the bottom of riser, BOR. And then usually we go about five feet down. To UG1. And then so from here, we're gonna go out to our backflow. I usually give this its own node called VF. And then from BF, we'll go the rest of the way to, we'll call the city connection CON. And then from CON to test. So that's our, um, our node path. Going back to the drawing, if we were at nine foot eight here. Bottom of riser is at one foot above finished floor. Going down five feet from one foot above finished floor puts you at negative four feet. So our zero plane is about right here and these back flows usually stick up about um, three feet or so. So we'll go about three foot six for the BF and then back down to negative four down here all the way to our test, which will be at zero because we come up to our hydrant. Let me call this test. So since we're at negative four down here, usually um, we'll just call it at zero and I don't take in the pressure gain that we get from adding 
elevation to this test point. And at the test point, we'll add our hose of 100 since it's light hazard. So that's uh, that's going to be the the way we go about it. So T O R B O R B O R to U G one U G one to B F B F to C O N C O N to test. So having that, pull up my calc program. So A five to T O R. We got that length of T O R. We're going to go B O R. And just follow the nodes that we laid out. UG1 to BF, BF to CON, CON to test, and then we'll leave the test here. I'm gonna go back to my water sources and update my hose to 100. Hit OK. So there's our hose allowance that's required by code. So TOR to BOR, we're gonna just. Um, guess for now we're in schedule 10 so from 9.67 down to uh, the bottom of the riser which is at 1 that's 8 foot 8 and then uh, going down that path uh, I think we're just going to use a riser manifold since we have a backflow out in the uh, out in the street outside the building we don't need um, an additional check valve at the riser so uh, I like to you know it's good to um, it's good to uh, keep backflow prevention in mind uh, but there is such a thing as overkill in my opinion you don't want another check valve uh, for because if you ever need the system you want the water to go through it so you don't want it to be going through multiple valves to get to where it needs to get to to extinguish a fire or suppress a fire so um, that's why when there's a check valve out here uh, or in a vault that's very nearby uh, to the system riser, I usually will just uh, use a, uh, a ready riser manifold. Um, I'll pull that up real quick. One of these guys here comes prepackaged with your flow test and with your uh, flow switch and your test and drain. So, and those don't get included in the calc. So at that point, I would just need to make sure I catch my butterfly valve on the path down, because we will need a system shut off. So from uh, BOR to UG1, that's going to be according to the. Um, plans here we got ductile iron fire line going in there so six inch ductile iron okay and that's about five feet to that bottom elbow and then UG1 remember we said we're, we're gonna go negative four since it drops to the back flow. So this is just sort of estimating at this point. Uh, since we have about 13.6 here, and we do have, um, so from negative four to uh, three foot six, that's seven foot five, uh, plus the distance from about here to here. which would be about eight six okay so we're gonna go about eight foot six and then well, since we're already about eight six we're just gonna call it ten plus the uh, seven point five so we're gonna go six inch ductile iron and then about seventeen and a half feet we're gonna go there's got to count our elbows here there's one elbow here and then there's going to be another one up here plus our backflow um, but the backflow will include it in the BF uh, node so we're just going to include the one elbows and two elbows 
and we're going to catch the elevation at 3.5 for our uh, backflow preventer. We're still going to use 6 inch ductile iron in the path. Uh, then from here to the connection point. Actually, I'm going to reduce this down. Whoa. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So yeah, we got about 5 feet plus the uh, 7 foot 6 difference. So over about 14 foot 6. And this is where we need to catch our backflow. Oops. We need to catch the backflow plus these two elbows plus the gate valve and the T at the connection point. So this right here. So we'll go, we're going to have to right click in the cell for the fittings. And under curves, we'll find um, pretty general one that we uh, tend to go with is the Zern, I believe. And it's a detector as well. So we need to make sure that we select a backflow preventer that is uh, not only a reduced pressure, but also uh, a detector as well. And one good one to sort of go with is the, um, the 909. See if they got that on the list for under watts. They do have the watts 957 RPDA. That's a reduced pressure detector assembly. Um, so I'm going to double check those real quick. And it looks like that 957 RPDA is the one that we would be looking for. Now, um, the exact backflow preventer might be a little bit different, but the uh, takeouts are going to be very similar. Going back and confirming the uh, the uh, the pressure loss through your flow on whichever backflow is um, actually installed out there will uh, may affect your calc a little bit, but Usually, uh, just selecting either a Watts or a Wilkins will get you uh, similar flows. And uh, here's the flow diagram that you'll want to follow as well. So um, we'll choose that one. So we got our backflow. Now we're going to need our two elbows, our gate valve, and then a T for the connection. So going back to fittings, we'll go elbow, elbow, two elbows. And then a gate valve and your T. Okay. So connection to test, it looks like we have uh, an eight inch existing water line here. Now I'm going to go to um, Google Maps to get the remainder of the run. So the job site is uh, about right here. So the new building, the new church is about right here. And you can see, I'll, I'll pull it up on the civil plans. Runs along this way. Actually, I have it in the CAD as well. So there's the highway and then there's this 
street right here and the hydrant according to the flow test report. is at the very end of that um, street here. So let me just double check I'm looking at this correctly. So there's that LCRE road, job sites right next to it. Water line runs all the way down. So I know there's a hydrant right here. I wonder if that's the one. So yeah, this actually might be the hydrant on the civil plans. Let's go back to it. Yeah, that's the one right there. Well, let's see. Yeah, because our job site is about right here, so it might be further down. So using Google Maps, I'll uh, double check that one last time. So it looks like that hydrant is right at that driveway entrance, and the other one's further down. So we're going to go from about right here, use right click to measure distance, and we're going to go about 600 feet to the next, to the test hydrant. And that's, uh, we're going to call that 8 inch ductile iron pipe. And how far did I say about 600 feet? 600 feet to our test point. We're going to include an uh, elbow, a gate valve, and a T for the hydrant. Our elevation to that is at negative 4, and our test is at 0. We're going to give that a quick error check. Should be none. And now that we have all of our data input from the rest of, of the, for the rest of the way, this is the, this should be the calc that determines uh, Let's see, cannot open fixed pressure file. Okay. Okay, so it's look it's looking like it didn't like that backflow preventer in the calc. So we're gonna right click back into it. We're gonna get rid of rid of all that and then we'll go back into the curves and see if we can just find uh, one that works here we'll just go with a regular RPDA see if this works okay so what we can do is uh, remove the backflow and then just run it. So we have a flow of 342.7 required for our system. It's still a big safety margin on that so I'm going to reduce it down to two and a half inch riser 
Let's see what that does. It's still 47 pound safety. We can even reduce our main size down at this point, looks like. Keep our riser two and a half inch. All right, we're dropping it down a little bit more. What if we just went with a straight up two inch riser? And I mean, that's a very good safety factor on there. So even with the uh, With reducing this down an inch and a half, the better would still work. Oh, nope, it didn't. So it looks like two inch is the magic number. So two inch riser, inch and a quarter lines, 22 foot pound safety. Um, so we have a flow demand of 345 GPM 345.4 so going back to our flow data 345.4 you can see the horizontal pattern is the solid line so at about 345 we're close to about eight pounds, so it looks like we can, we're between seven and eight, so we're gonna go about seven and a half pounds of pressure loss. So the way that you do that, since uh, it's not really liking the, the backflow in there, I'm gonna right click back into the, um, the cell, and in fixed pressure loss, we're gonna manually input that say okay so now it's gonna take about seven and a half pounds of pressure off at the backflow to account for that assembly there I'll run it again and you'll see what we drop our safety down to 14.6 which is still a very good safety um, I could bump up the riser to about two and a half inch um, but I mean at this point it's um, you know it's a good working working calc so if we bump it up to two and a half it, we get close to a 20 pound safety and a lot of times um, just having a one size bigger on your riser for a system this small it tends to uh, facilitate uh, you know if, if they ever decide to remodel the building or anything like that but um, you know I'm just thinking if uh, that two and a half inch riser is worth it a lot of times if you are working um, for a company and you have such a good safety factor and, and all that or even with any other job that you might be working on uh, regardless of the safety factor in the calc um, you could take a stroll through your shop and see if there's any extra material that you can use there might be you know so in this case there might there might be a four inch uh a four inch um riser assembly like the one that we looked at um here on the shelf with a four inch butterfly valve that you can just use that was either you know from another job or extra material or something and so you can take that opportunity to maybe bump up your riser so that you can use material that's on the shelf and um, and you know not spend the money buying a new two inch riser so you have it's uh, it's uh, good to sort of just check on that but that's pretty much the completed calc there um, I'm just gonna go ahead and drop it back to two settle with that 15 pound safety um, remember to turn on your schematic diagram close there and um, 
I'm going to call that good. So now that we know it's inch and a quarter lines, one inch arm overs with the two inch mains, we can go back into our drawing. I'm going to delete the model one more time because we do have our inch and a quarter lines, but now we got two inch mains. Which I guess, you know what, I might not have had to erase this. I can just go through here and select the main piping real quick. So you can see how these small little jobs can get done pretty quick by using the automated features. If I do uh, properties and change this from four to two. And there we go. Save this. I'm gonna resize these mains over here. And then after this, you would just need to kind of go through here and start cleaning up your drawing and your nodes and get it ready to submit. So that was, uh, that was pretty much it for this one. Uh, we went through and we covered this uh, remote area all the way back to the riser uh, and then manually input the rest of the way. So I'll still need to show the, the underground in the drawing, but for the most part, we got our system sized and calced and it's ready to uh, continue on with the rest of the submittal process. So I'll see you all on the next one. Thanks.